This Week in Startups is brought to you by Airtable, the all-in-one collaboration platform that is flexible enough to keep up with the most creative, fast-moving teams. Visit Airtable.com slash twist today to get $200 in free credits. Dashlane, the leading password manager that safely stores and autofills all of your passwords, logins, payment information, and more, streamlining your web browsing experience while keeping your digital identity secure. Head to dashlane.com slash twist to get 10% off of a premium subscription. And the Hartford. The Hartford knows that being a founder means having to make a lot of choices and that you've got enough on your plate without having to worry about getting the right small business insurance. That's why they provide specialized products and insurance solutions that can be tailored to meet your needs. Find out more by visiting thehartford.com slash twist today. Upcoming launch events. Get your free Founder Pass or purchase a VIP ticket for Launch Scale in San Francisco, October 7th and 8th at launchscale.net slash tickets. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Startups. You guys play casual games. You know about that. You played the Angry Birds. You played the Clash of Clans. You probably played War Machine, Machine War, all this stuff. You've seen all these games. These games are ginormous businesses, and they're tapping into an audience that never played games. They don't have consoles. Nope. They're not going to go buy a PlayStation or a Nintendo Switch or whatever this nonsense is. And they don't have a gaming PC with a rig with a bunch of GPUs in it. They're going to spend three grand on that and be J, A, S, D, F, J, K, and whatever you kids are doing with the Fortnite. No. A whole new category has emerged. It's casual gaming. You know who plays casual games? Women, moms, dads, the over 40 crowd, Gen Xers, boomers, and they have a ton of disposable income. That's why you see these ads all over the place, and that's why you see them at the top rankings of the App Store. Our guest today, Kristen Dumont, is the CEO of Machine Zone. You may not have heard of Machine Zone, but cue the clip. You've seen some of these amazing games, uh, and I've seen them and played them as well. Game of War, Mobile Strike, Final Fantasy, War, World War Rising, and you probably know them because they have a ton of celebrities attached to them, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, what's her name? Uh, Kate. Uh, Kate Upton. Kate Upton. Kate Upton. And then uh, must strike back. And Mariah. Oh, and Mariah's. In yeah, there? we had Mariah Carey. Very nice. Um, and you are big believers in marketing. I know you guys did a Super Bowl commercial a couple of years back. That's right. Yeah. So welcome to the pod. Beautiful games. Thank you. How many people? play these kind of casual games on like a percentage basis. So if we looked at a billion, there are a billion iOS devices, 1.4 billion iOS devices, I believe. Well, I'll tell you this, we make strategy games. Right. So very different. So it's the second most popular category, second to casual. And casual would be games like Nah, anything that's like a fruit slicer matching, you know, the fruit jewels. slicer. Yes, I love the that. Fruit You're slicer. so dismissive. You're yes. Like, like the fruit slicing nonsense. <laughs> we do strategy. Yes. Okay, J. It Cal. Is. It's not fruit slicing, it's strategy. It does matter. The economies uh, are very Candy different. Candy Crush is like somewhere between fruit it's slicing been, and strategy. It's, a, it's midcore. It's midcore. There's it's strategy. Midcore. Yes, there's more strategy. Midcore. Involved there. We got a new one. You got to learn all the terminology. Is that really a term in, in casual is. gaming? Mid mid-core? to hardcore. Mid yeah. to hardcore. Yeah. There's midcore, uh, there's hardcore, there's casual. But we intentionally do not make casual games. Got it. What is, why not? The economies are very different. The type of player is very different. The economies tend to be pretty thin. So you're trying to get an incredibly, you know, uh, a huge number of players and pretty thin monetization opportunities. And so we made a very intentional choice to do mid to hardcore. All right. So we got the mid core gamers. They're somewhere between the casual. The casual gamers, maybe they bounce in and out of a game every couple of days. Yeah, the point is, if you're essentially mid to hardcore, you're saying, I want you to play my game for years. Got it's it. not something where I'm going to play this you know, in little bite-sized pieces, and I'm going to jump from one game to another. These people are making a big investment in time that this is going to be their game for several years. So how long does it take you to build a game? Because I know you guys built a platform so that you have total control of the world. Yep. And I, you know, I know that that's kind of an important thing that uh, you're constantly adding new things to these worlds. That's right. As opposed to, I guess the casual games add levels every couple of months or something. That's right. But your games are sort of like World of Warcraft in that. Exactly right. Every day something new emerges. That's right. 
So making the game is is certainly part of the investment. They take about a year, you know, year and a half to make, yeah. um, depending on how involved the game is, right? Yeah. Um, but that's almost day zero for us because then you have to keep the game alive for years and years and years, and you constantly it. are engaging in sort of a you know a, a, an equation with your consumer of making sure you're delivering compelling content for years. What's the lifespan of one of these mid-core games or even the hardcore games? Because I heard that like the kids are off the Fortnite now. Is that true? And I know that somebody told me Minecraft, people playing Mi are now, kids are now playing Minecraft as, and I know it's a different category, yep. as a, like um, out of nostalgia, yeah. we're going back to Minecraft. Yeah, that is actually a huge trend. Is it really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, EVE Online, for example, you know, it's, it's 10, 10 years plus, so... You know, these can last a very significant amount of time. Game of War is still very alive and healthy, right? So we're six years in. Wow. So these games have very nice tales on them. Yeah. It's interesting. I used to, in the 90s, I guess maybe the late 90s, when I was in New York, we'd play Command and Conquer. Mm -hmm. We'd have LAN parties. Yeah. With you Doom. know, there's now a mobile Command and Conquer. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Ah, Command and Conquer. And then we'd also play um, Age of Empires. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft just came out with the classic redone version of Age of Empires. And I actually have a gaming PC in the last two weekends I played Age of Empires. I was like, God, I miss playing this. Yeah. I was like, I need to have some friends. So it brought you back in. It brought me back in. Yeah, I have no friends. Good. That's okay. Over so time, I need to find you'll get some games. But you'll, anybody in the you'll audience find global who friends. plays Age of Empires, I'm J Cow will destroy you 415. <laughs> uh, just add me on. But I actually think you sort of hit on something interesting about gaming, which yeah. is now it's like it is breaking boundaries in terms of where people get yeah. their social connections from and where their friends are located. It doesn't matter if they're down the street now. Yeah. You can connect with anybody globally. Yeah, I want to get like my old crew back together. Like you we should. had a clan and yeah. like, get our old clan back together and start playing get games. Get your little but, neighborhood crew back. But it, are, are people who are doing this, uh, the games you make, because they don't have headsets on. And That's my right. understanding of the hardcore gamers is that a big part of the community, because I was watching some of my friend's kids playing games um, on vacation recently, and they didn't want to go outside. We're like in a beautiful location. and like They just want to play video games, so you have to like give them a window to play. Um, but they all had these headsets on and they were talking to people. That's right. But It's the same thing as going outside and playing. You just go inside and put on your headset and I you know, play. I know, it's really yeah. dystopian. Um, but I mean, you don't do that on mobile yet. That's not really, and not our games. Our games are strategy games, and so you're engaging in chat. You're, we're very committed to making mm -hmm. sure we're developing games that are very native to what mobile is like. All right, when we get back from this um, quick break, I want to talk about the m global nature of this mm -hmm. because I also got into backgammon. I wanted to learn a new game because I play cards. I wanted to learn backgammon because my dad plays. I wanted to have something to do with my dad that wasn't arguing or fighting about nonsense. So I was like, like what can I build a bridge with my dad? And I was like, it plays backgammon. Let me see if I can get into backgammon. I actually kind of like it. And now I'm playing backgammon with a global audience. And my my it, this really cool in the game, they show the fl flag of the country of origin. So my daughter, who now plays backgammon with me, is always like, what country is that? And we have to look it up. Uh, so when we get back from this quick break, I want to talk about the global nature of this and how many people are playing outside the United States and how they interact with each other and how you do the sort of translation and bring those two different, all these multiple cultures together when we get back on This Week in Startups. Software should not dictate how you work. You should dictate how you work. That's where Airtable comes in. It's an all-in-one collaboration platform that is sweeping through Silicon Valley and tech startups. People are going crazy for this, including the investment community. I use it. Everybody's using it. Brian Alvey uses it. Everybody's crazy about Airtable. And Airtable is an ideal product for founders who are price sensitive, huh? And who are time poor. You don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of time, you want to use Airtable, and you want to create and operationalize as many processes inside of your startup. Founders can use Airtable for a wide variety of use cases. Product roadmaps, right? Maybe sprint planning, huh? Application tracking, fundraising, CRM, all the different investors you're using, and so much more. They have a template for everything. So instead of researching and buying and managing all these desperate, disparate, desperate, disparate, you know what I'm talking about, all the different ones. You don't need all these tools, just use Airtable, come on. Here's CMO Presh showing us how easy Airtable is to use by popping in, grabbing a template, and just using his data in Airtable. It integrates with all the apps you already use, like Slack, the G Suite, which is Google Docs, 
GitHub, LinkedIn, Dropbox. Customers of Airtable include Reddit, Slack, Box, WeWork, Zoom, Cole Hand, Shopify, BuzzFeed. In other words, every important company is using Airtable. Why? Because it saves you time, it saves you money, and what more do you need to know? So I want you to head over to Airtable.com slash twist and get $200 in free credits. I am not kidding you. That's not just a hundy from JCal. That's two hundy from JCal. Two beans, okay? Two hundred large boom in your pocket if you go to airtable.com slash twist right now at launch ballooner steezy tory free play and all of our founders are using it they're crazy about it okay thanks again to airtable for making an awesome product let's get back to this awesome episode okay welcome back to this week in startups the greatest podcast from earth to mars uh kristen is uh with us dumont she is the ceo of machine zone and you guys make billions of well, hundreds of millions of dollars in these games? Nine figures is what I would understand. Billions, yes. Billions in revenue. Wow. Yes. These are lar- these are these are very, very, very large companies and large products. Wow. How many people work at MZ or do you call it Machine Zone or MZ? Well, we went through a little bit of an identity crisis, and okay. so for a little while, we just said we were MZ, because this was, we got a little bit away from our gaming roots. We were a technology company, not a gaming company. Ah. And part of the refocusing of the company and reimagining our future was uh, committing to games and game development only. And we're back now to Machine Zone. Okay. So Machine Zone has how many people? Ballpark? Thousands? Over, of... over 500. Over 500? Yeah. Uh, here in the Valley? Uh, here and in Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, how did you wind up in Las Vegas? Um, just trying to find the best place to do some customer service, QA. Ah. Some, of our, some of our art talent is out there. So you sort of follow where the talent mm. is. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Tony moves Zappos. Tony Shea moves exactly Zappos right. there specifically because he needed customer support people and impossible to find in Silicon Valley. And he trained them well because we actually have a lot of former Zappos people. Oh, wow. Yes. So yeah. you have that crazy culture. Yeah. That's it, it, awesome. It, it, it's a, and it's actually very interesting who we hire from Zappos. This whole notion of having a very flat culture is very yeah. ingrained in them, which is interesting. You're yeah, not what, doing this whole locracy No, 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 no. You can't get too weird. Yeah, that's like, that's save that for Silicon Valley. I think no, he he he. I've had long discussions with him about holacracy. But for people who know, it's it's kind of this idea that anybody can do whatever job they want at the company. It's really way out there. I think that's nonsense. It really why I do. You believe in specialization, think, or no? I just think people ha- people want to be better than other people. I think people are naturally competitive, and huh. so you don't encourage somebody becoming great at a certain skill hmm. if it's just all way it's all really fluid and everybody yeah. can kind of hop to whatever job they want. It's so just you, there's not a level of ex- excellence that's demanded. Got it. So you believe that people should go to work and get stuff done and do work for the money you're paying them. Absolutely. And you Shocking, want to hold people to standards. Absolutely. KPIs and standards. Yes, absolutely. H- how does that dovetail with today's entitlement culture here in Silicon Valley? You must have people coming to you saying, can I work from home? Can I get unlimited vacation? Can I get unlimited free food? Which culture items do you believe in? Which ones don't you believe in? Whatever encourages productivity at its highest form is what I believe in. So food, you need food. We will absolutely provide food. Got it. But we will also provide a workplace where you matter. And so when you're not working, it also matters and you just don't survive. If you're not committed to actually delivering great Mm. products and pouring your lifeblood into a product, it's just not the place for you. Do you believe that effort and time spent working on something correlates with success in life? 100%. Because I think the people who put in the effort want it more. You have to want to win more than everybody else who says they want to win. You can't win part time. Got it. Well, what about balance in your life? I think it's balance. Yeah, I hate that word. Yeah, me too. Well, I think especially, I do think women get asked about balance all the time. It makes me kind of insane. Yeah. I have four kids. Yeah. They, they, there's, we don't have any discussions about how you know, mom's not there to pick them up. But it's just, I think you have to just make it a normal part of your day of, Look, yeah. I love all these things equally, and so I've redefined balance probably by necessity huh. of I spend time and energy where I need to spend time and energy at yeah. whatever that moment of time is, and all those things are equally important to me. Yeah. And so I don't think my kids think I put work first. Work doesn't think I put my kids first, and so somehow I've, I've worked it out. But you just yeah. have to say I love them all, and I'm going to commit to all of these things yeah. um, and achieve excellence in all of them. Yeah, you know, it's like a cop out to go like something's going to a ball's going to drop or something's going to fail. If you accept that as the worldview, then that's just kind of what happens. 
Uh, and so the socialist movement here in America of uh, everything's free. Yes. Uh, and you're um, you're on board for that. Every everything free, free college, free free rent, free free Spotify for everybody, free everything. Nothing's free. <laughs> exactly. I say that all the time at home. Nothing's free. Yeah. I'm actually amazed though. My my oldest is 16. And I would have thought that he would, you know, I would have brainwashed him a little more effectively, but apparently not, because he was honestly advocating for all student debt to get erased. So I yeah. said, well, who do you think is going to pay for that? It doesn't just go away. It doesn't evaporate into the ethos. Someone actually has to pay for that. Right. It's going to be paid for That's by right. taxpayers. So then I just started taking more taxes out of his allowance to say, well, I'm just, we're going to just collect, now for, collect the, now for the student debt that you are going to pay off later. Yeah, it also sends a very weird message. If everybody gets their debt forgiven, that then, well, what does the next generation do? Yeah. Well, well, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, I'll take debt up to the hilt yeah. well, because isn't it'll get forgiven. But I think that's actually the point. I think the point is to huh. slowly brainwash people into thinking debt is a great thing because it'll just go away. Who cares? There's no consequence to debt. And so then the people who worked yeah. hard so they didn't go into debt yeah. are the fools. Yeah. And the ones who maximize debt to the detriment of themselves, but to the benefit probably of governments and people much powerful, more powerful than us, yeah. you know, get to laugh. Uh, it's interesting too because I think you know the airlines getting bailed out constantly yeah. and Wall Street getting bailed out during the financial crisis really gave people this upper hand to say, well, you're bailing out rich, powerful people, therefore we might need to have bailout culture. And we don't need bailout culture; we need accountability culture, and we shouldn't have bailed out Wall Street. We should have let a couple of banks, and a couple of banks did fail, in fairness. But this idea, I was talking to to name drop Richard Branson about like. Uh, all the airlines getting bailed out. And it's like, yeah, if you're a new airline, you have to make it. And if you're one of these old airlines with pensions or whatever, they just bail you out over and over again. And you're like, why does the service on United and Delta suck? It's like, well, because all they do is work for the bailout. Yeah, and I don't think Amer uh, enough Americans appreciate that they're the ones that bailed them out. Right? It, exactly. all gets, it all gets passed on to them in terms of higher prices. All right. Well, but I do want to say one thing, which is, I don't think millennials are as bad as people think. Agreed. And, and I have found that people are really just looking for more meaning. Like there's almost like a mis they're a misunderstood generation, which is yeah. they decided money was not the thing. So they've got these phrases that we might have an allergic reaction to. But at the end of the day, what they're saying is, I want my time to matter. Hmm. So they actually end up being some of the best employees because once they commit to sort of a purpose and a cause, they really are all in. Yeah, that makes total sense, right? The entitlement, we, we, you see entitlement. And what they're really saying is, if I'm going to give my life to this, it, it better be there. Better be some substance here. That's right. Right. And if I'm not going to, yeah, of course, I want to get the entitlements. Right. If I'm punching a clock, yeah, okay, let's have the negotiation. I'll take all the entitlements you can give her, give me. But if not, yeah, if I find purpose, then I'm going to sacrifice. And they do sacrifice massively. They absolutely do. If it's something they believe in, let's go back to the um, cliffhanger before about going international. What percentage of users in a game are non-US these days? for your games? It depends on the titles. So Final sure. Fantasy was obviously a very intentional play for us to, to grab a more international audience, Got Asia it. in particular. And so we've got almost 30% of the players are outside of the United States. Got it. Yeah. Did you have to license that, I guess? We did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you create your own IP and you license? That's right. Got it. Which is the better business? Oh, I'm counterculture on this one. Yeah? I think the majority of people think it's all about licensing IP. I think mm. that's super convenient for the IP makers. Mm. Uh, and I think especially mobile game makers, because it really is about you know digital marketing. You have to have an expertise in digital marketing to make it in mobile gaming today. Right. I think people really need to focus on building their own brands and their mm -hmm. own IP, or everyone's going to sort of become this slave to the IP owners. Got it. And, and, that, and that's expensive. It seems expensive. I... I got bombarded with this like the star trek games yes i guess there's some star trek game that I, that's not yours nope what is it what is you know i guess universal cbs owns the star trek franchise what would they get out of those games they take 10 percent, 20 percent of more, much more than that and of what, the top line or yeah well no of profit ah uh, got it uh -huh. and w the reason i point that out is because they're not actually taking the risk on user acquisition ah uh. so Typically, it's the developer who's taking on all of the risk for, you know, marketing and advertising and obviously all of that expense. And then the licensor sort of sits in the background and says, if it works out, great, because I'm going to take a huge cut of whatever you make. And if it doesn't work out, well, no risk to me. Got it. So it, it's a really, t you know, we'll see if it changes over time. But, you know, to date, it has been one that's quite disadvantageous for developers. 
And the Walking Dead games, do those get built by AMC or the owners of that IP, or are no, they also licensing? They're also licensing. Yes. Got it. And, and those they become license bidding to a lot wars? of people. Yeah, well, here's also the problem is they license to more than one game company. So what? to get an exclusive license oh. is extremely expensive. Now, we did that, too. So yeah. with Final Fantasy 15, we said, all right, it's less important to us that it be exclusive because we know we're going to be you know, better marketers than others. Right. Um, and so then that brings down the price for mm. it. But you do have to make a conscious business decision of is exclusivity worth it? And can you break through all the noise of all the other people advertising their games? So there might be three or four Walking Dead games. Yes, absolutely. And they're all paying a licensing fee. That's right. And they just have to, I guess, hit some standard... IP Bible about how get some approval, I guess, to that's what right. happens in that's the game. Right. And that's actually a big problem with a lot of people who huh. own IP is that that approval process Ugh. is a complete mismatch with how fast mobile moves. So Interesting. For, for mobile advertising, the number of creatives that you need to be able to produce and the rapidity with which you need to be putting out fresh content. Because um, if you're seeing the same ad on your mobile device over and right. over and over, your odds of downloading that game are just less and less and less. So I have to deliver fresh ads. To do that, I need to obviously develop fresh creative. And if you've got a company that has these 7, 10, you know, 20-day approval periods, oh, you're, um, screwed. you're screwed. Does that also apply to the in-game experience we talked before about you have to constantly keep the game fresh? That's right. And I know that you guys study user behavior. So if they love a certain character or they love a certain environment, they love a certain ability, you double or triple down on that. That means you've got to go to them and be like, yeah, if people really like playing Michonne versus, you know, Rick or whatever the character mm -hmm. is in Walking Dead, they're like, oh, no, you know, Michonne can't use a gun. She can only use a sword. That's the Bible. Uh that would also slow that process That's down. That's exactly right. So one of the things, we were very lucky with Square Enix. They mm. were, it's it's very much a partnership, right? So yeah. we're borrowing one of their, you know, most storied pieces of IP. So they're yeah. very protective of it, um, similar to a Star Wars or a Star, Star Trek. But there was a lot of respect for our mobile capabilities. Uh. So they were very uh, flexible also. Got it, yeah. In allowing us to come up with the rules in advance. Right, So we need to pre-agree on what we can do on our own and when we need to come to you for approvals. So there was a lot of time spent on the front end, making sure that we didn't have to constantly go back with approvals, for sure. There's been a lot of different revenue models tried. Yes. Um, you used to buy the app. Yes. For 10 bucks or yes. whatever, 14 bucks. Yes. You had to make a, a, you know, a big decision up front. There was like unlocking levels. There's buying in-game stuff. There's buying like... Karma or mana or, or whatever coins, whatever the genre is, and you kind of use them as you go. Correct. Um, what's the best model in your mind, and what models have do you, have you guys deployed, and which one did you settle on? I definitely think the best model is what we do. Okay. Coincidentally, yeah. which is in-app purchases. Got it. Uh, but obviously, we revisit this constantly. Like, is that uh. does that continue to be the best model? And we observe other people trying alternative models, including advertising, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. Um, so this means I'm playing a game like fan Final Fantasy, and mm -hmm. I want a certain sword, or correct. You want to get, you want to have certain resources, or you want to expedite your progression in the game. Uh. So you're paying for something in the game. I think it forces you to make a better product. So if right. I'm a consumer, I would demand that because it forces you to every time I have to convince you that the thing I'm giving you is worth your hard earned dollar. Got it. Right. Every single day I need you to come back into the game and I need to convince you again and again and again and again and again, yeah. which is very different than an advertising model, which says I just need you in it. Mm. I just need the eyeball. So it doesn't really matter the yeah. quality of the game because I'm making money through a different source, which is just eyeballs. Right. Yeah. And very different, obviously, than somebody who, you know, it's much more like AAA console games of old of you make a purchase decision in the very beginning. The game mm. is $9.99. Right? Uh, you yeah, don't really know too, what you're getting. Yeah, that's way too much. But what do you think about subscriptions? Because World of Warcraft became I do a think money subscriptions printing are smart. machine. Yeah. I think subscriptions are smart. I think what we continue to struggle with, I'm, you know, we'll try a bunch of different things and we'll you know, try and fail like we do. And then yeah. ultimately, I think, hit on something that's right. But providing enough value to the uh, consumer for a subscription month after month after month while not actually taking away from something they would be spending on 
in that in-app purchase, that's the difficult tension is I don't want it to just to become that you spend $9.99 a month and you don't care about the game anymore. Hmm. I don't ever want the games to be the back of your mind. They need to be very front and center and core to your social identity, your experience, you know, the things you want to spend your entertainment time and dollars on. We need to make sure you're coming into the game and engaging. So I worry about subscriptions making it passive. Yeah, you're not making that decision. That's right. It kind of buffers you from it. You might set it and forget it. Yeah. Let me um, ask you a super important question because a lot of my startups are asking me the value of a celebrity endorsement mm -hmm. or a celebrity involvement and in integration. I have one company that I'm trying to get in touch with, uh, Will Smith, because it's a perfect alignment with his brand. And I know he likes to do a little investing from his family office. Anybody know Will Smith? Just email Jason at calacanis.com and CC me. <laughs> no, it actually works. I got like three people on Twitter introduced me to in startups he'd invested in, I guess. Um, so I'm trying to get in touch with him. But when we get back from this quick break, I want to know, maybe just take me through how you got Arnold. What was it like to work with him? And what does it take to actually make that vig because you're paying them some amount of money that i think his time is very valuable i don't know if it's seven figures or eight figures or six figures but i want to get an idea of what it costs and why you do it when we get back on this week in startups the average adult has 130 accounts passwords two-factor all of that to take care of and you know what we do as adults in america when we have that many accounts we make stupid mistakes like using the same password over and over again. We're using a weak password because we're trying to remember all of these. Well, that's where Dash Lane comes in. It's a really great service that takes all of your accounts, all of those passwords, and it secures them and then allows you to instantly make them long, strong, and powerful passwords that will not get hacked. And then they also allow you to share those passwords with your significant other or loved ones or kids uh, or coworkers even. And all those documents that you have sitting there that are not locked up like your passport or your driver's license or your birth certificate or insurance certificates or stocks, bonds, whatever it is you have that are at risk of getting stolen. Well, no more. Now your digital identity is secure with Dash Lane. And here is CMO Press signing up for Dash Lane just to show you how easy it is. That's right, he installs that browser plugin within seconds. He adds passwords for all the social accounts and he'll never need to remember them again because they're long and they're strong and they got all those crazy characters in them. Stop guessing your passwords. Stop using weak passwords and keep all of your digital identity secure using Dashlane. I want you to go to Dashlane, D-A-S-H-L-A-N-E dot com slash twist and get 10% off a premium subscription. Please use that URL so they know that we sent you. You must take control of your digital identity and Dashlane makes it so easy. I love the service and you're going to love it too. Go to Dashlane dot com slash twist right now. Okay, let's get back to this amazing episode. All right, we're having an awesome discussion with Kristen Dumont. She is the CEO of Machine Zone. She started as a COO, previously was uh, worked with a former CEO who at a law firm or something. We'll get into that. Uh, but when we left our hero, we were talking a little bit about getting Arnold on board. And he's all fantastic. in. He's done all the commercials and he dresses like a general and says, you have to buy my game, download it now. He also says, I think, build the wall in one of them. You have to build the wall so that we can <laughs> blow it up and tear it down. Um so how did you get him? You just reach out? Or is he yes. like, does his agent say, listen, Arnold's open to doing games? Or... Yeah, you'd be, you'd be amazed how much they start calling you once you're willing to spend on celebrity. Yeah, Man, you become be. everybody's best friend, right? Yeah, and course. so everybody's calling. Splashy cash, you would call yes, that in the business. exactly right. So especially since it had gone out, gotten out that like, you know, we overpaid for Kate, which I don't think we did at all. But once that gets out, Kate then Upton, it's- Kate like, the yes, supermodel. Yes, so then that, the, She's a supermodel, right? I don't, I'm sorry, I don't want to- I don't know the an definition anymore. Supermodel? She's a supermodel who I, I think tried to become an actress, which actually is kind of a big problem. Because when we were trying to find other models who would, you know, Work. we could hire for yeah. our ads, everyone thinks they're about to win the Academy Award. So it really became, I'm uh, a supermodel, but I would like Academy Award pricing, please, because it. I'm gonna win the right. Oscar. Got it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's the Super Bowl ad. We'll play it real quick. This had to cost you like whatever, five, six million bucks, I think. Looks gorgeous. Less than that, but they're not cheap. Yeah, they're opinion. not cheap. Yeah. I'm back. He's going to strike. This one was called One Liners because yeah. we just obviously collected his one liners, but it ended up being one of the best scripts. It was so easy. It wrote yeah. itself. Yeah. And I'll be back. Hasta la vista. Now, wait a second. Are those his lines? 
yes. lines in the world? Yes, yes. Who owns those trademarks? Well, we obviously had to look deeply into that. Did yes. somebody own them? Do I now have to pay another licensing fee? Yeah. Just no, because they've become so widely used. They're cultural. Thank goodness that yes, yeah. they're now basically out in the world, and so they're uh, free for everybody to use. Yes. What about Taco Tuesdays? Can you use that? I don't know. <laughs> LeBron Taco Tuesdays, huh? Somebody's gonna have to research it. I know. I- I'm doing uh, Mango Mondays now. But my joke with Mango Mondays is I cut up the mango on the weekend and I just say, I love Mango Mondays. And I do a picture of myself eating a mango. And then I just, I'm just trolling people. How did that not become viral? And then people (laughs) reply, it's, but it's Sunday. And I'm like, what? Oh, but it was ripe on Sunday. I can't wait till Monday. You can't lose Uh, your alliteration. So does it work versus having Arnold lead a game like this it's obviously very aligned with his brand correct right because he was an action hero and i'm assuming this cost a lot of money yes is it worth it and how do you figure out if it's worth it and justify it oh, is it worth it is a hard question yeah. um is it worth it you've done it three times yes yeah um kate I- upton arnold and who is the third mariah carey Okay. So the is it worth it depends on who the celebrity is. Got it. Okay. Um, Arnold has global... There's nobody in the world who doesn't know Arnold Schwarzenegger and who doesn't love him. Oh my gosh. She's off the charts. Madonna Jesus level. So he was absolutely worth it because he has such global appeal. He's beloved. He conveys a lot. You associate him with your product. He conveys a lot of trust. I mean, all the things you would want when you have... Yes. um, When you're hiring a celebrity. And then he was absolutely... Delightful to work with. Yeah. Bust his you know what. Yeah. I mean, practices his lines, even the ones that are quintessentially his. I mean, I he's didn't a professional. get here by accident, Kristen. Okay. <laughs> yes. When he had, you know, he very he's very uh serious about delivering for our value. I mean, you yeah. paid him money and he still to this day takes that very seriously and he's not flip about it. Why do um, you think that's seven terminated movies? Okay. I We're know. going to rebuke that until I die. You're very good at it. I'm terrible at it. I know you are. You're terrible. <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. But it's, it's okay. The worst he song likes it ever. anyway. Um, so I, uh, that part is not what's problematic. Uh. It's the the cost of advertising, that the cost of a Super Bowl commercial, for example, is outrageous. And then to make it even more of a racket, what they've done is you have to buy all kinds of spots in addition to the Super Bowl to get mm. the Super Bowl spot. So if you're approaching it like we typically do, which yeah. is that you n- want to return on every dollar invested in marketing, then from that perspective, it's hard to know if there's a return on those dollars, yeah. right? You can't track them the way you can digital mm. marketing dollars. Yeah. So we think we ended up you know, in a profitable spot with those, but you have to really make a, a very reasoned decision about that. Yeah. And it's not that is not your business. It's a nice marketing technique and tool. The core of the business, I would think, is... What's more important to your business on a percentage basis, the ability to iterate on the marketing or the ability to make these games? Because the games, it seems like, are all very similar to me. I could be wrong. Uh, So it's both, and I would tweak the games part. Okay. So I would say you cannot succeed in mobile market, in uh, mobile gaming, if you don't know how to market your games. You're just planning that your game is going to go viral. Some yeah. some sort of zeitgeist moment is going to happen for you, and that is way too risky of a play. So you hope is not a plan. No, hope is not a plan. Okay. So and you know really all these small mobile developers have is they're hoping Apple or Google features them. That doesn't deliver the kind of installs that it used to. So that's sort of a fool. What do you plan get now. if you get featured in the top spot by Apple? Five million, five million downloads, a million, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then it's, how many of it's those very crowded. open it a second time? If let's say you had a gangbuster and five million people downloaded it, a month later, how many of those five million would open the game? It's a very small percentage, but that's one, mobile. two, three. It's in that range, low yeah. single digits. Yeah, it's a very small percentage mm. of players that you're retaining post install and that is true for mobile but that's why you have to be able to market to the whole world right right you're trying to increase your denominator yeah. right and then you're trying to get better and better and better at retaining those players and then obviously converting them to oh. paying players mm. i think it used to be extremely valuable to get featured on apple because it was very precious real estate same with google but now yeah. it's very crowded it road you know it has it rotates it changes throughout the day they're spreading the love yes there's a very much spreading the love there was a very intentional shift to editorialize what do we like as apple um, they're picking winners. They're picking winners. And they're writing long pieces, I know. They do. They Who write these, that? They, they, they don't write these put a big byline essays. on them. Who's writing those? They have an editorial team? They it's, hire... all it's, the, it's the Apple universe. Yeah, yes. nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's it, all very secretive. Do they contact you 
ahead of time when they feature you and tell you they're doing it? Oh, no, it? you beg. You beg. Oh, you, beg. you beg. We all Please. have to beg. Please, yeah. yeah, we all beg. It was really interesting. One of our investments, Calm.com, the meditation app, just woke up one day and they thought I they were- I love that app, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. $160 million in revenue reportedly this year. They're on the run. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I invested when they had 10000 a month. Who would have thought peace of mind would be that? Nobody did. Yes. Five years ago, I, I bought 6 or 7% of the company for $378,000. Wow. Yum, yum, skis. It'll be a bigger <laughs> return than Uber in my portfolio. And everybody's like, oh, you got lucky on Uber. And I'm like, yeah, I did. But calm was not a mistake. Yeah, that people was need skill. to find peace. That was skill. Mm -hmm. I saw that. I was like, meditation? That's going to work. It's so clear to me. And then Trump got elected, and that's like the virality. Now everybody that you needs could... it. Well, it, it's a joke, but they kind of alluded to that in the um, in the Apple review, in the editorializing. And I was kind of surprised by that because it, it felt like a political statement, which they never make. Mm -hmm. And Tim Cook's been really good in managing the relationship with Trump. I think he actually, think probably his biggest skill is like managing Trump and China. And- in the piece, they were like, yeah, it's been a crazy year for a lot of people who feel like, you know, frazzled. And I was like, the year Donald Trump was put in office. Is I mean, this has devastated friendships. It's just- Families. It's, I have families. It's stunning yeah. how Trigger divisive warning. it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually went in front of the company and said, we're n no politics. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. We're a no Smart politics move. zone. Keep it at home. Yeah. To yourself. I, I have a 15 person company, so I can just come in and say, no politics unless it's my politics. There you go. That's it. That's like, nice. We're going to yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about capitalism. There's some scale at which you can't do that, but no. it's tough. It's I'm tough. I'm just about capitalism. When you want people to you want people to come to work and talk about what they're passionate about, and oftentimes it is politics. Yeah. So it's actually a very affirmative thing to constantly say, no, do not even bring it. We, we, can't, we can't focus on the things that divide us, and it's just too divisive right now. Yeah. And then they go on Slack, and then they start talking about it, and then you. <laughs> have a record of the water cooler. Like, I think it's we're so kind bizarre. of similar generation. Yes. You're Gen Xer. Yes. You're born I in even this... said water cooler to my kids and they had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah, exactly. The water yeah. cooler is now Slack. Yes. And I went into Slack and, you know, there's like this, I think it's a default channel where it's like they have like an off topic or like yes. random. Random. It's the worst channel to ever create. Uh, you gotta delete that shit. Hey, randomly, I would like to say something super offensive in the random channel. Yeah, let me and it's randomly logged for history. expose the company to... <laughs> Six random <laughs> lawsuits. Yes. And literally people are like, oh my God, did you see the Fire Festival documentary? <laughs> my favorite scene is this one, which involves the reference of a sexual act. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like, I know. People's judgment gets a little nutso. It's like the second you say chat. random, it's like permission. Yeah. We're like random Say chat. something offensive. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they should call it. Yeah, they should. They should call it- uh, Get fired channel. Get fired. <laughs> Random, the channel where people get fired. Where good people's careers where go, go to, to die. die. Yes, <laughs> yes. Here's where you commit career suicide. It really is. It's, it's tough. Now, our employees have gotten dramatically better about it because we talk about this a lot. Yeah. Of uh, just using great judgment and anything that's written down. It's like sometimes you just can't also, take the lawyer out of the girl. But... You, you have Slack, right? We have Slack, of course. Yeah. Here's the thing. On Slack, my understanding is you can't record peer-to-peer peer -peer discussions. Correct. This those is are bit, private. Those are private. Correct. That should not be the feature. That should be set, and everybody should know Especially that. Especially for corp. I mean, for corporate accounts. For, for a corporate, corporate account, accounts, I should own all of that information. This is some wacky yeah. thing because what if somebody is harassed, or what if somebody is uh, stealing from the company, right? And this is why Slack can never be in an organization that has any kind of compliance issues because if you were covering a company on Wall Street and you did some kind of insider trading thing. You have compliance. You can't allow employees to talk to each other unless you're recording it Though and triggering that, names. Yeah, I think that sort of changed over time. It was like with with Office, everything was recorded. You could double delete and it wouldn't matter. Yeah. But with Google Cloud, it was it was difficult. As now you're hearkening back to my Larry days, but yeah. it was still was tough even then to get the full and complete conversation on something if people had deleted it. It was just a matter of whether or not Google had That's kept it the, on its back And then people end. leave with the Google Docs and they're like, they delete all their email That's like right. out of spite. And it's hard to find the record. And yeah, but now I believe there is a new service because I looked into this for liability reasons for startups and there is a third party service that I guess redirects your email and then keeps a copy of everything. And Google was like, yeah, if you want that, get this third party, we'll plug it in. But I think now you can pay, like, I think they bought that company. Somebody email me and, and uh, fact check me. But I think you can now, you have to jump through a bunch of hoops, maintain all the copies of every I email. I think I'm a little bit on the opposite end of the spectrum on that one, where I'd rather the things go away. 
Yes. I'm not sure it's wise to keep everything. I think that probably hurts you more than it helps you. As as a attorney, you probably saw that. Yeah. Is the former people, former attorney. As a former attorney, Reco- recovered. Oh really? Like Where we we had yes. Silicon Valley. Company? Yeah, I was at Wilson Sonsini. You were. Yes. Yeah. Oh, did I ever meet you in Wilson? Because I was with my attorneys. So. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. you did you work in the startup group? We worked in every group. Every group. Yeah. yeah. So One I, market or? Yeah. So I was first, obviously, in Page Mill. And yeah. then I went up to Spirit Tower. Oh, yeah. So it was very fun. Very cool. But I had a very bizarre career at Wilson. It was fun. Uh, when we get back from this quick break, I want to talk about your role to the CEO slot. You might not have noticed, but you're a woman. And you took the CEO spot in a gaming company. Oh, My understanding of gaming is that it's it's all bros in the top spots. Is that true? That's true. Okay, when we get back, I want to understand how you wound up being the CEO of a gaming company in Broland, making games that I think, are the games primarily for bros? What's the percentage male-female breakdown? It's changing. Only in Final Fantasy do we have a significant percentage of women, which is 40%. The other games are mostly male. Yeah. Okay, when we get back on This Week in Startups. As a founder, you need to make a lot of choices, and you've got enough on your plate without having to worry about getting the right small business insurance. Not every company needs the same level of protection, and you don't want to be wasting your money. That's why the Hartford provides products and capabilities that allow you to select a solution so that it can be tailored to your specific needs. The Hartford has a dedicated team focusing specifically on the needs of small businesses, and they've done so for over 30 years. They were the first to do this, and they're the best at it. They serve over 1 million small businesses across the United States. That's a lot when you think about it. And the Hartford knows that technology is integral to your business, and when it fails, the financial impact can be significant, and your business could be sued over these errors. And most Traditional liability insurance policies are not designed to respond to financial claims in a lawsuit. No, but the Hartford can help you protect against these and other risks, and they can do it in a way that is right for you as an individual. So find out more by visiting the Hartford.com slash twist, H-A-R-T-F-O-R-D, Hartford.com slash twist, the Hartford.com slash twist. With small business insurance from the Hartford, the bucks got your back. The Bucks got your back, people. Get back to work. Let's go. All right. Welcome back to this week in startups. My new bestie, Kristen Dumont, is on the pod. Your husband watches the podcast. Yes. Is he a Listens fan? Listens and watches. Fan or super fan? Where would you put I'd him? I'd say super fan. He's super fan. Super fan. What's his name? David Brent, which is funny because oh. that is the lead character in the British version of The Office. Is it really? Yes. Yeah, so he gets a ton of emails where people want like his, you know. Ricky Gervais? Yes. His yes. character. I love Ricky yes. Gervais. Hey, David. Uh, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, your wife's awesome. You hit the jackpot. Um, I just love your candidness. We were talking during the break, which is where all the great conversations happen. Being a candid leader, a double-edged sword. Definitely. You guys had to do layoffs. I understand that's never easy. So did Not you, fun. When they brought you in, were you like the ax woman? Like you had to come in and cut things and clean everything up? Was that the role? No, not at all. Oh, Actually, okay. when I jo- I had been advisor to the company when they were quite small. Yeah. Um, I joined when we were on a huge growth spurt. I think there was about 200 employees. We grew Whoa. to over 1,000. Um, so it was the refocusing of the company mm. on just gaming alone. Got it. That was, I got to be the CEO for that part. Ah, got that it. So you got to lay off, what, 500 people, half the people? It was, you know, sort of over time, but there, you know, there was a significant number of people in 2018 that we had to let go. How do you manage a massive reorganization? Yes. Which results in people being laid off and bad feelings. People are going to lose some of their friends who they love coming to yes. work with. What's your philosophy and how did you manage it? Uh, I think you need to personalize it. Okay. And then you cannot lie. Mm. And I think so many people lie. It's not you, it's me. It's a, just a lot of nonsense. Like, what sounds good? Uh, you know, what can, What do I think I can kind of get away with? Um, huh. And I made a point of being very incredibly honest mm. about where we'd made mistakes right. and where we'd overinvested in certain tech as a company, um, uh, how we'd lost our way. Um, and... I personally looked everybody in the eye and said it was my decision. It wasn't anybody else's. And I picked who were on those lists. And if you wow. were, if you were going to be pissed, be pissed at me. And I understood you took what it meant. complete ownership of it. Yeah, which is brutal. I mean, it's devastating. And you, it's, you know Sorry. what you're doing, right? And yeah. it's extremely devastating. So you try to make it as, as gentle as you can. 
Um, but it's really just more about respect. Like, I'm not going to lie to you and I'm not going to treat you like you're a child. I'm going to give you the respect you deserve. Right. That you committed to Machine Zone and now Machine Zone is changing up the nature of this. Yeah. Um, and you're angry and, and you might understand, but it's still not fun. And we're going to do everything we can to make it a soft landing. And then, you know, I do feel fortunate that I've, I know so many people in the Valley yeah. that I really, you know, busted my hump to try to help as many people as I could yeah. to get a new gig. The good news in our industry is if you made it to Machine Zone or Uber had layoffs, if you made it to one of those companies and you have that on your resume, there's five offers for you tomorrow. Absolutely. So it's really the shock of being laid off and the voice in your head, I think, which is, well, wait, half the people stayed and they obviously picked based on performance who was essential. So am I not essential? And it's like, that's not the right way to look at it, I think. I mean, you might on the edges be able to read into it a little bit that maybe there are people who are better than you at work, which I'm sure there are people better at you at your job and there's certainly people better than me at my job. It's possible. Um, I don't know. Unlikely. We see, it's unlikely. I agree. I think we're both at the top of our game, <laughs> candidly. I mean, I don't... <laughs> It's pretty obvious, but um, I think gonna... we were lucky that we oh. there were certain skill sets that we needed, right? And there were business divisions that were not working, right? And hadn't been for a while, hmm. um, including the division that was going to go into crypto. And oh, so, yes, I Lord. know we get to talk about crypto. Oh, it's so much Lord, fun. here we go. Yeah. You're in my kill zone now. Triggered socialism, crypto. That's Let's right. Go. That's right. So Wait, that what was, was the that. crypto dipshit craziness. <laughs> CryptoDipshit.com, please. Yes. If you don't know that domain name, it's just, a, I said, I called somebody a crypto dipshit. And, and then did somebody buy the domain? Yeah, me. Oh. Uh, and we made a t-shirt <laughs> that says CryptoDipshit.com. Oh my God, you're going to run out of t-shirts because you got to have to dole them out to pretty much everybody. Absolutely. But you can get your own and we have them, I think, in ladies cut as well. So if you if you need the <laughs> okay, ladies cut. I must cut, have one. You must have I a crypto must, dipshit t-shirt. Because this would be funny at the company. People would love why it. Am I, why don't I have a crypto dipshit t-shirt? Get me crypto dipshit t-shirt to wear on the show. Okay, so tell it's me It's kind these... of stunning. It, re it really reminds me of sort of like the beginning of the internet. The dot-com days. Where everybody was rushing into the space yeah. and a bunch of nonsense and- No uh, products. N no just products. Ideas. They're all brilliant. But yeah. this is like worse. This is people Why? who don't even have money, right? So you've, you're yeah. comparing, a, you're, you're pairing up people who have no product and the people who have no money, they're fakers, Yeah. who are saying, oh, I'm in for 50 million. I mean, just making up these ridiculous numbers and they have no capital anywhere. And they're right. just seeing if other people actually end up putting in, ah. then they run around and fundraise in the background. And so they might be able to come up with some portion of it. But right. the whole thing is, is it's nonsense. stunning nonsense. But there must have been a good idea at the core that somebody said, hey, if this were to work, Yes. It could change everything. So what was yours? You were going to make like, let me guess, a currency that went across all games? Of course we were. Yeah. And do you know, what our, to and do you know what our token was called? Times. Facebook game, stole it. No. Game. Oh, lit. it was Libra? It was Lit. Lit. The Lit token. The Lit token. Yes. L-I-T. Yes. And so this token would go across all games. So it wasn't no, enough. No, actually, we weren't going to apply it to gaming. Ah. It would have made a little bit more sense if it was gaming. Oh, okay. okay. But at the time, we had another division called Satori. So uh -huh. this is in the MZ days. Yeah. And so Satori, you know, was is a tech that underlies a portion of our games. It's a mm -hmm. real-time messaging system. It powers right. a lot of our translation. All, it, it's incredible tech. And the idea was that this technology can be applied in a vertical that's not gaming because it's just a great idea, right? And it's great tech, and we Got built it. it and spent a lot of time building it. So there were all kinds of different potential applications, smart driving cars, smart cities, all kinds of things, which oh may or may not have been good ideas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the final iteration of it was, I know, we'll do it in crypto. And so you'll use this token. And I, I mean, heck, I have- Utility token. I can't, yeah, I can't Chuck even e. quite tokens. explain exactly what the token yeah, like was going to do because yeah. it's a lot of- <laughs> Nobody can. Well, because it's it's actually, Satori's, you know, well, I have to be careful. Yeah. It just- Hope was hope. the plan. Hope was the plan. Yeah. So- We hope that smart cities will emerge and yes. we'll hope that they need a currency other than the currency that we're all using every day that works perfectly. This was the thing that I couldn't explain, was why do you need the token to do that which we're discussing? Oh. You, Normal currency. You didn't get the memo? Yeah. It's on an immutable blockchain. That's right. Immutable was the word. Yeah, yes. it's immutable. Yeah. And the I'm like, well, what does that mean? And they're like, doesn't change. I'm like- Crypto is funny because it is crypto bingo. It's like distributed, immutable, like all these things. I, and- uh, you know, if you can to... say enough words, people go, ooh, I think there's a product in there. I, yeah, the immutable nature of something, I'm trying to figure out where that's a good idea. Okay, I would like to know that every judgment ever made by a jury is immutable. Like We have a record of that from the justice system. Okay. Oh, except if maybe 
it was a totally fraudulent case and we want to seal the files because it's unfair to the yeah. people who were in it. Okay, so we don't want it immutable in that case. And every time somebody would explain to me immutable, I'm like, in, in what world is immutable a benefit? And nobody could say that. You- I mean, it might have some applications that I haven't. I mean, I do think there's a, the tech itself might be something that's valuable. Yeah, um, but maybe. all of the tokens sort of popping up in the space, promising to do something in the future. Yeah. Uh, just yeah, maybe it's just because I'm too old. I mean, it just really reminded me of a lot of the chaos of the past. And whenever yeah. you have sort of a, a mismatch between capital and yeah. ideas, crazy stuff happens. Well, it is when you get capital following. Yes. Like a dream like that, that leads to multi-level tulip dot com yep. mania and all kinds of weird behavior. Yep. And it builds on it because the person who made the bet previously doesn't want to admit they made some kind of mistake. That's exactly right. And then like looking person, at bad blood out of the corner of my eye, it reminds me of that oh sort of behavior Lord. of if I say it's all for good, then somehow I'm also part of changing the world. I'm part right. of something totally amazing. Yeah. And you really want that person to achieve that thing. And you want to have been right oh. that you backed the person who was like, you know, Messiah like and ushered in change and, yeah. you know, the end to famine, et cetera. Yeah, except physics, reality. <laughs> except you know, physics. Like products exist. I want a t shirt that says, except physics. Except physics. And also like reality, like products are not being tested in some laboratory, they're going out into the real world. So there is a system in which your games hit the real world. And that real world is like a world filled with choice. Correct. I, I have Netflix and a zillion comedy specials. I have, you know, all the Marvel movies. I have console games, you know, other games I could play. I could pick casual instead of medium core. And that's where I think entrepreneurs get tripped up is that they don't realize they're going to have to put that coin in the real world and it's going to have to go up against my mastercard i agree i i I do think though that venture capitalists to some degree have helped usher in this age of the faker yeah um and i really do think it's like pattern recognition and then maybe again maybe i'm romanticizing when i was younger but i you know at wilson sonsini we represented founders you know from when we were baby lawyers yeah and I just, the founder of that age versus yeah. the founders of this age are very different. It's almost like we want sociopaths. We want, yeah. you know, this very different uh, type yeah. of person than the people who used to found companies. And there was more realism before of at some point, I got to find some way to monetize this idea yeah. um, in a way that scales. And there was almost a discipline. Then we lost it maybe in the d- pets.com and all that. Like, yeah, that okay, was web big, van yeah. got a little crazy. Um, and I think we've gotten a little crazy again. We're like feels, the founder worship is a little odd. There needs to be. It's great to have you on because you, you have the experience of being attorney. Uh, there needs to be governance and there needs to be accountability. And the thing I never understood during this whole thing, because I've, I've been an entrepreneur and a journalist my whole life and only really an investor for the last five years. Seriously, in the mm-hmm. first five years, I was kind of just doing it two hours a month and, you know, hitting four unicorns, but whatever. Um, and <laughs> I love the humble brag. It's a humble brag. Whatever. I just drop I'm it. not even sure there's humble. I think okay. it's flexing. I'm yes, flexing it bad, is. But yes. it's a call flex, but uh, it's what the kids call it these days. Um, but, you know, the thing that's super weird, there was a period of time, like in 2014 and 2015, they're like, yeah, let's not have a board. Oh, yeah. And I was like. Oh, this are shares the, that don't vote. Or shares that don't <laughs> vote. And I was like, wait a second. I kind of grew up that like having a board of directors was this magical moment that like we go to Sequoia's office and, you know, Moritz would come in and Michael Moritz will be on our board or John Doerr and it's going to be real and we're going to make plans. And like it was cool. It, like le- that. it lent gravitas to the company yes. and it meant your idea was good enough and you, what worthy. you were building was worthy. Exactly. I completely agree. We lost that. What happened? Okay, what ha- if you read the WeWork prospectus, maybe I don't know how to say that. No, <laughs> that, let's go that all like, in. That is that is absolute bonkers. madness. Talk about governance, but you know what worries me about that? First of all, it's bonkers and the fact that e- anybody's even talking about putting any money behind that. It's like you're give me your biggest top, Give me your idiot. top three problems with it. Let's go down here and then we'll rank them. Okay, I have my top problems. Let's go here. Let me hear okay, we'll, Let's do dueling banjos. <laughs> Worst thing about WeWork prospectus. Governance. Okay, in okay. what way? Explain. The fact that clearly the board, I don't know. They've decided Adam has like a messianic quality. He is like the second right. coming or whatever. So no matter what he does or what he wants to do or what he wants to charge them for, it doesn't even matter. 
But now, 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 you can put this in and post. You took the trademark of the company for yourself and had the company pay you $6 million for it. The optics and the appearance of, and the impropriety of that is second to anything I've ever seen. But no, 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 no. God, where did you start? Okay, so, uh, putting in the word tech, I don't even know how many times for a real estate company. But no, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> buying a G650. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not yeah, a jet share. I know. It's not a Falcon. Yes. No citation. I know. Could have gone with a Pilatus turbo prop, get you where you need to go. I mean, could have gone with the Phenom 300, but no, you have to get the jet of. Kings and Queens, the Oprah jet, the Jobs jet, the Larry and Sergey jet for an unprofitable company that sells desks. But I I mean, we could go on for an hour. We really could. It's like giving a loan of $700 million against his shares, which he then just pushes back across the table. And now he's not a shareholder. And then they give him a profit interest so that he has. But no, 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 no. I mean, it just keeps going. (laughs) It does. Wait, oh, we forgot about like the fact that they want to raise the world co- world's consciousness. But That's no, no, the no, no, mission. No, no, no. Like, uh, like the mission is to raise consciousness one desk at a time. Oh. Have you seen those desks? Have you sat at a desk? Let's be I've honest. I've been there. Yes, yeah. Have you sat at a desk? No. See, this is where your no. opinion does not matter, Kristen. I'm sorry. <laughs> because I sat at one of those desks Tell for me years. We were, we were there. Blonde wood. Subtle, smooth, four <laughs> peg legs. And in the center, a hole for you to put the cables through. Cable management like you've never seen. It's revolutionary. Okay. Sturdy, elegantly simple, yet complex. <laughs> I'm just like, it's a goddamn desk. desk. And where is the pricing power on a desk? Not. There's zero. You come out with a new weapon and it kicks ass. People might pay, I don't know, what's the most expensive thing inside of a game like is there a ten dollar item or twenty dollar item well the app stores limit us to ninety nine dollars okay so there's a ninety nine dollar super item and i'm sure people love to pay for it they do no problem that's for a virtual item you've convinced people just through the absolute creativity and fun of playing a game that they should give you ninety nine dollars what do you think happens to a six hundred dollar desk when you charge eight hundred people are like what Bye. I'm out. Bye. Bye. But I think the more lunacy there is, and it's so, such a widespread story, and everybody, if you say the WeWork IPO, people generally know what you're talking about. If they're anywhere on Twitter yeah. or they're at all awake, <laughs> yeah. they have a sense that there's this crazy IPO where somebody said a bunch of crazy things. So then we just dial back from there. That becomes the standard. If you're not that crazy, yeah. then, it can't, then okay, maybe it's legit. That's yeah. what worries me about those kinds of yeah. Companies where you get so far Mm. from just the math of a business and you're looking for people who just sell a bunch of nonsense and people throw money at it. And that is actually dispiriting to the people who are trying to found legitimate businesses. I agree. And one of the great things is that that I like about the situation is that before the public got their hands on this thing, the community – came out in force, CEOs, angel investors, podcasters, journalists, just everybody, and said, is this crazy? Maybe this isn't a good idea. And that actually gives me hope that maybe, you know, when you look at, uh, you know, DoorDash and Uber and Lyft in this pricing Mm -hmm. war, um, and maybe underwriting people's delivery of food, like, they have to be looking at Newman Adam Newman's behavior, Newman. I mean, seriously, dude, get therapy. I mean, what's going on, dude? You have to get, I mean, that's coming from me. I mean, I'm an insane narcissist. This is a level of narcissism that bewilders me. Stunning. Stunning. Who's, you have to think, and back to governance, who's on the board? You have a board. Oh. You ever go into the board and the person asks you hard questions? Yes, Gary Cohn. Okay. (laughs) So somebody's in there These asking are you hard people. questions, right? Yes, whose reputations presumably are at stake. That's what I don't get either. Who's on the board of this company not asking the hard questions that wants their careers ruined, like the people who were associated with Elizabeth Holmes and that I know madness. Those people will never be taken seriously again. 
on a board. I mean, of course, they were like Henry Kissinger. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, they, they had nothing to lose at that point. Bushes. Totally. That was bizarre. How is that not a sign? It's like they're all military experts. <laughs> that's yeah. the board. They're There's like, nobody with a scientific background. That was odd. Yeah. They're like, you know what would yeah. be great for a board of a blood testing company? <laughs> uh, somebody who fought in World War II. <laughs> that's what we need. We need somebody who is a Korean War vet. Because, you know, they saw blood, whatever. Like, what is the thinking there? Like, a head of state, somebody who managed geopolitical... But it's changing the world. That's what I think is interesting about oh. WeWork, is WeWork has to try to... T it's real estate. And it, how do you say you're going to change the world with real estate? What's going to happen? That's why you come up with nonsense. Like, we're changing the world's consciousness. Because that's yeah. what gets the big dollars. It's so dumb. It's, it's ridiculous. It's so dumb. And we're sitting here, like, busting our asses every day trying to make real companies. And this dipshit goes out there and figures out a way to get billions of dollars on desks. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. I just, this is also a controversial viewpoint. I wonder, I don't, I try not to see gender in too many things, but if a woman was saying the things he was saying, no. I want to know how much capital that woman would get. Capital. She'd be considered they would get a an idiot. Order. I was going to say, they would she'd put be a considered picture the reception an desk. Like, idiot. Here's a crazy person. Yes. Here's a crazy Beep. Mm -hmm. who, who you should not let into the building. Exactly. That's right. what they would say. Yes. They would say, this is a crazy woman who is suffering from mental illness. <laughs> Please don't let the crazy woman right. into the building because she'll probably show up at some point and like. Right. Throw... And let me look at this person's background. Uh, have they ever grown a company before? Nope. Do they have any? Are, have they ever been nope. around it? Nope. 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 This nope. No. Nope. Throw her out. Yeah, yeah. Get her out of here. That's right. And, and put and give security her picture. Yes. From the security cameras. That's what would happen I if know. a woman came up with that idea. Not that I want lunacy to get money regardless of gender but i just it's such a stunning yeah. example to me of like if that was a woman there's just no chance this would be happening yeah uh she being, was one of the few but the, like, elizabeth holmes like you know did that deep voice and all the nonsense it yeah. was like where's Let your me, deep voice yeah i'm going to start talking like Kristen. this oh no you should go mobile first. gaming go for the, the vocal fry yeah I know a lot of women are doing the vocal fry now what is that vocal fry is when you go well, Jason, uh, you know, when we landed, uh, Arnold, Okay, that's like he, uh, antithetical to everything I believe in. <laughs> you have to like, it's you like- have You have to try, you have to practice. About. I know what you mean, but you it's have hard. to practice it's that. Hard. Your energy is better spent actually building a good business. Absolutely. Uh when we did that break, I did some sort of a cliffhanger about uh, being a female CEO in gaming. Does it matter, or and what's it like for you? Is it is it is it a positive? You get no. easier to recruit, or no. is it negative? Like gamer dudes are like, ugh, what does she know about gaming? I feel mixed about this answer, so of course I'll I'll okay, just yeah. give you both sides of it. Yeah. So uh, okay, let me give you the optimistic side. I have four kids, three mm. boys and a little girl. So for her sake, hmm. I don't want to be too negative about it yeah. because you, I, we must give hope, right? Yeah. And I think one of the things that's so frustrating, <clears throat> not just about tech, but in particular gaming, is just there's a dearth of women. Hmm. There's not enough women. I, I mean, we try everything we can to, to recruit women and get them in the door. They just, if you're a woman, I don't think you go, I know. I'll <laughs> go into gaming, yeah. right? It's You're already going through the tech barriers and then yeah. to go into this segment of gaming, I think that's tough. So there's not enough. So I very much want to encourage women to join because until more women join, I'm not sure that things change that yeah. much. Um, I think what's tough about being a female in tech still to this day, and it's extremely frustrating to have, you know, been, you know, by a lot of founder sides and then be on the completely other side of the table running a company is not much has changed. Hmm. In terms of, I think you still don't get the presumption of competence as a woman. You wow. still need to, in every meeting, I, we literally were just doing some fundraising, and I got asked twice during the roadshow if whose assistant I was. So just stuff like that. Where and I know it's a little bit bizarre. Wait a second. Yes, yeah, we come into the room and they're like, "Oh, okay." Um, and you're you're, right? you're so and so's assistant. Okay. Well, presumably my name's in your calendar, or the company's name's in the calendar. Wow. So. I just don't, th I think women still have to prove that they're intelligent. Yeah. Maybe that's why they do the voice for what are we called it? Fry, fry. Something, fry. yes, may, it's Vocal some fry. way to convey uh, intelligence and gravitas. So I do think a lot of these odd behaviors pop up yeah. because women still don't get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Okay. I think a man is presumed to be competent. Yeah. There are some exceptions to that. And I'm just talking about generalities. Years. Yes. And then people are just like, patterning. Get in here, bro. Here's a check. <laughs> totally. 
Yeah. Start writing checks. I'm like, all right, <laughs> sure. And I do. I think <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I but. think it's like totally human. It's like the whole what Moneyball was written about that, right? Yeah. It's like you look like Jose Canseco. You must be a great ball player, right? Yeah. And so I just think people sort of pattern recognize, and and I get yeah. why it happens. It's just a drag. Um, and I think in gaming, it's tough too because you got a lot of people. Mobile's relatively new, mm-hmm. right? I mean, these app stores didn't exist, so you've got a lot of people who came from console. And being a gamer generally meant you were a dude. Yeah. You hung out in a cave all by yourself. Yeah. Right. And you were on, super hardcore and about put playing on headsets games. Headsets and yes. said misogynistic, crazy yes. stuff. So yeah. there's this like, what do you know about? Did you play League of Legends? Yeah. Do that. Yeah. There's right. a lot of testing of like, oh, what, what's yeah, your yeah, game that... bona fides? Because yeah. I'm not sure I'm going to listen to you unless, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So there's a lot of that. But the good news is there's a woman in charge now, and yeah. there are. Uh, everybody wants to change the ratio, so that's good. Very much so. And I see a lot of young women who are into gaming now. There seems to be something changing. I think as gaming, well, I do think gaming is already displacing most categories of entertainment. Mm. And I think gaming is going to really displace social networks entirely. Really? And so I think, you know, for Fortnite, that's one of the, it is huge, and one of the, the reasons it's huge is that's the social glue between so many people. So if you don't know what's going on in the game, and you don't really know, you know, mm. what's the latest skin, right, yeah. or what's the latest dance, you're kind of lame. Like you need right. to know basics yeah. in order to engage, actually, just socially in the in normal world environments. Yeah, like in the '80s, we needed to know the band members. Yeah, like you didn't. It wasn't you study enough to know it. You Bono. Know it. You yeah. needed to know the drummer's name, the bass player's yep. name. You need to know the, the the deep tracks, the deep cuts, the rare. Tracks. And I think Fortnite's super approachable. Yeah. So I think it is introducing a bunch of little girls to games. Yeah. I My think daughter it's... is nine years old and she's in Minecraft all day now. Yeah. Building stuff. My five year old loves Minecraft. I don't know if that's good or bad. She's probably too young to play games, but she actually likes it. And I think it's good because I, I don't know enough about it. I, I, I'm getting more educated, but it seems like they're building stuff. There. Yeah. And so she's like, here's my cat palace. And she like, I won't let her have a cat because I'm allergic to them. And she just built a cat palace. And then, you know, doing the dances. Yeah, the floss. I know. <laughs> I know what the floss is. Okay. Literally, See, I went... but if you do the floss now, you're really a loser. That's like, then lame. you're a boomer. I, Only I boomers to... do the floss. Yeah, if I do the floss, you know it's the I end. I still do the I'm, floss When I home. do the floss, that's the last floss that's ever going to be done. <laughs> that's like the nail in the coffin. We do, but You've killed it. I killed the floss. Um, I went to, like, the talent show last year. Okay. And literally the entire talent show. Was people doing the floss? No. Yes. Oh, doing all the Fortnite dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there were like 30 acts, and I'd say at least a third of them had the floss or some other thing in it. Yeah. So see, that's going to become the social network. That'll be people's currency. Uh. So already in our games, like one of the really critical components of our games Mm. is that it is really heavy into social. Yeah. So people get married. I mean, but th- this is true for a lot of MMOs, but yeah. you're really building it around the social experience and cool. allowing people to kind of create their own gameplay based on whatever social dynamic. Yeah. And I think all games are moving in that direction. It's just kind of groovy. It is cool. It's true. It's creative. Yeah. It's social. Yeah. People form tributes to other players. Like their kids get sick. They say all about it. You know, it uh, becomes a form of therapy for people. Yeah, These are cool. really, really strong community connections. All right. As we wrap up here, I, I saw Apple launch their finally their game subscription service, mm-hmm. another model, five ninety nine a month yep. to play games. You're going to participate in that? Or that seems to be a different yeah, we, concept. Yeah, we would not. Yeah. How do you make money? I'm already paying the VIG. I'm not going to give the VIG more. Uh, is third. 30% is a pretty big VIG. Yes, it is. Now, if we do our own subscriptions, mm. then there is a smaller cut that they take. 15%, I think they it drop can it go down da- to, Yeah, it can go down year. to after. Exactly. You in have to Exactly. They have to renew, and then they'll drop it down to 15%. So that's good. It's progress. Right. Um, and I do think it's nice to see Epic going around some of the platforms, right? Uh, because it does, I mean, that would have been- Epic's n- Fortnite? Yeah, that would have never happened. So they didn't launch on Google Play and said we're, you know, essentially we're not going to pay that thirty percent. We're large enough to sort of have our own platform for doing this. So that I think helps. I think so if an the, Android person wants to play, yeah, they don't have to. They don't have to download from from Google Play at all. How do they get it? Through through their website. So you just download it to your device. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. So there's all kinds of different ways to play. You don't need to pay the vig for that. And you I can, think yeah, that you can have a third party mm-hmm. app store. On Android phones. That's correct. You don't need to go through Google. Android is extremely fractured. You don't. Yeah. It's like Google Play is one but part why? of it, but there's many, many, many. What you think Apple will lose this Supreme Court thing about the App Store, like locking it down? They're going to do. People are kind of pissed off about this, so I think they're going to try to crack the App Store. 
That'd be. I think that'd be good for I'm Apple. To, I have to root for Apple, so there you go. Okay, so you're rooting for. I think Apple. they're going to win. Okay, they're going to win. Great. Please feature me, Apple. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. There um, you have it. I think Apple, as Apple loosens its grip, they actually win more. They're just antiquated in their thinking. If I message allowed Android users, I message is so good that they should let it be cross-platform. In fact, there's an argument they should open source it and let everybody go crazy with it. Then you would have, it could take on Slack, it could take on yeah. everything. Yeah. And they're so narrow-minded there that they're the only people who can make anything good in the world and that all of the platforms are I terrible. I do think that's changing. I ha yeah. In recent meetings with Apple, yeah. They're much more, I think, attuned to what their Achilles heels may be. Oh, good. Um, I think there's much more flexibility as to, look, they de deliver incredible value. So yeah. I don't have to deal with payment processing. There's all kinds of things for sure. an app developer um, that are extraordinarily valuable. I yeah. think they're questioning, like, is it 30% of value, which is nice. I mean, to see Apple being reflective is actually a welcome change. Yeah, and the unusual. power move would just be for them. I think what they should do is drop it down to 10% flat for everything. And then just they would because they're already 80 percent of people's yeah. revenue. Then they go to 10 percent or they could say if you make above this amount, it goes to 10 percent. So it's 30 percent up to a yeah. million dollars a month. When you get to a million dollars a month, it drops to 20. You get to 10 million. It drops to 10. But why? Like this is what's wrong with digital marketing. It's like Google and Facebook own all the advertising inventory. Yeah. So it's like when you have a monopoly or a duopoly, it just without fair yeah. competition, they're not going to do that. They're going to just extract the maximum piece they can because there's no reason why they need to change that. Yeah, they need to start thinking about 50 AGs signing on to go after Google. Yes, that was stunning. Yeah, it's uh, pretty stunning. They're not going to do anything, though. Yeah, I think they're... On I, the, I, sometimes I'm hopeful that those those things effectuate change, but it's like you have a bunch of... It's attorneys who are paid by the government. Yeah. You're really asking these people to... Well, I think it'll be a backstop against future bad behavior. So if you look at what Google has been doing in search results, like if you search for one of your games... yeah. I bet you there's three competitors above your linking. That's true. And if you don't buy the top spot. That's right. So you bet the organic result is now the fifth. That's right. And I think people still do think it's pure. Right? To us, that's old news. But I do think the average consumer thinks it's a 60, pure result. I, this is what I said on CNBC the other day. I said, if the AGs want to know where to go, I can tell you where the body is buried. They, bar they, they buried all the bodies in the same place. They designed a UX that makes the FTC and the government agencies think that the ads are clearly labeled while confusing users. Get me a thousand users, have them do a flight search, have them do a game search, have them do an app install search, have them do a news search, whatever it is, shopping search, and then tell them, um, do have them click through, and then say, did you click on an ad? After they click through, say, did you click on an ad or did you click on an organic result? They won't know. They won't know. Yeah, 60, they won't 70 know. 70% will not know. So Google is explicitly designing their product to confuse users and to screw the organic results by moving them down. Then they claim they haven't changed organic, which well, is that true. part I didn't realize. Yeah, the oh, organic has right, changed. Right, they're saying it's right below the ad. What's the problem? What's the problem? We yeah. didn't change organic. Yeah. It's just a clear banner. It's just a banner. <laughs> and it's like, you couldn't uh, tell it was an ad. there are six links above it, and mm -hmm. one of them is Google Flights, and one of them is snippets that you're stealing other people's content and putting in there. So you squeeze your grip too much, I think you get the regulators, and the regulators will be that backstop. And if they made them make all, here's how you solve the problem. All ads have to have a yellow background. You do that to Google, oh, that would be meaningful. All ads have to have a yellow background. That's like, it. They used to. They used to be visually distinguishable. Did. Yeah. And they had a different font. That's right. So you say you have to have a different font and a different color background. Right. Well, they're saying now it says sponsored on the top. So people just need to read. But it's like, it's micro font. Yeah, it's like light gray <laughs> in the top right. You're like, where, yeah. where does the eye not go? I have to put top my glasses right. on just to be able to yeah. see it. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. All right. You're the greatest guest of the year. Uh, I don't know where then you came from. Then don't have any from. more guests. I can't I, have I, anybody ruin it. every year. We're going to do a yearly checkup because you're so candid and awesome. Uh, thanks to your husband for encouraging you to do it. Uh, your PR people are probably against this. Like, yeah, I talk too much. Come on. Yeah, they're like, I'm supposed you and, to zip you it. You Cal? It yeah, not come be on. You got to zip it, Dumont. If you're a great developer, especially if you're a woman, I want you to apply to work at Machine Zone. They're hiring for all kinds of amazing positions. Indeed. If you're a great marketer, if you make great marketing creative. If you're a great designer. Great designer, huh? Social media, I'm sure. Uh, as well as, of course, making games. Everybody go, what's your domain name? MZ.com. Ooh, MZ.com. That's good. Two-letter domain. 
Uh, that's pretty hard to get. That's not Everybody cute. go to mc.com and apply for a job and download the games. And we'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups. Bye-bye. I'll be back.